let's see this question okay this is basically an electrochemistry in your chapter question right so solutions we have done now let us see electrochemistry question what do you give us in a galvanic cell the electrons flow from okay, the simplest question so they have given here one option galvanic cell so basically in galvanic cell from where do the electrons flow remember so in a galvanic cell always electrons flow from anode to cathode okay. in galvanic cell electrons flow from anode to cathode through external circuit this is important to external circuit okay by its rules right. so they asked us electrons flow from where let's see the options anode to cathode through external circuit yeah anode to cathode through solution this is wrong anode cathode to anode through external circuit that is wrong cathode to anode through solution wrong basically here electrons flow from anode to cathode what is this anode is a negative pole what will happen at this anode always oxidation that is loss of electrons that's why electrons flow from anode loss let us write that loss of electrons from where do they go they go to cathode what is the charge in that cathode is a positive pole what will happen here reduction will happen so what is reduction reduction is nothing but gain of electrons so always remember in galvanic cell electrons flow from anode to cathode so the correct option is anode to cathode through the external circuit hope this is clear students right let's come back and do the next question hope i have written the concept clearly understand the concept so it's easy for us to do it now after the electrochemistry question let's read the next question and see so here uh, they've given one organic reaction let's see this they said ethylene reacts with bayer's reagent okay to give what so ethylene reacts with bayer's reagent they said so basically prepara uh, preparation of you know al preparation of alcohols from alkenes and so this is a basic concept actually right so let's write the reaction first and see what product we get what, what actually is base reagent basically in organic chemistry you have to remember different types of reagents students so as soon as base reagent is remember or a base reagent is given to you you have to be clear what actually is this base reagent is nothing but alkaline solution of potassium or alkaline solution of cold potassium permanganate let us write that base reagent not solution Bayer's reagent is nothing but alkaline solution of cold potassium permanganate. What is this importance of potassium permanganate? It is a very powerful oxidant. Correct? It is powerful oxidant. And let me change my sketch pen i believe let me take a different sketch pen students right so here powerful oxidant of let us say the reaction now so basically ethylene ch2 double bond ch2 done it's reacting with what alkaline solution of k 4 so k 4 plus water alkaline solution is there isn't it so what do we get here understand carefully so basically uh, here k 4 is an oxidant means it's going to add oxygen to this it's going to break this bond and add oxygen and what do you get ch2 ch2 oh and oh what is the name of this compound this is nothing but glycol now what happened to this k 4 gets converted to k 2 plus k oh so if I have to balance this 3 so this is 2 this becomes 3 this becomes 2 water this becomes 4 so this also becomes 3 this becomes 2 this becomes 2 but so this is the reaction so what product we get when ethylene reacts with Bayer's reagent that is cold solution or alkaline solution of cold k 4 we are going to get a product that is glycol 
right what is this glycol this is ethylene glycol so the correct option is ethylene glycol right so here so it took two carbons isn't it ch2 ch2 two carbons are here so it is ethylene glycol as a topic hope this is clear students let's come back and do the next question now let's come back again do one more question let's see this i think this is a grade 11 question let's see which of the following is never true for cathode rays right so basically whenever i speak about cathode rays what are the characteristics of cathode rays they said which is never true okay let's see so when i have to speak about cathode rays the important thing or, or the important concept i have to remember is cathode ray has or it contains fast moving beam of electrons fast moving beam of electrons that's the first one in the discharge tube next they have high kinetic energy right and next important thing uh, charge in mass means uh, basically categories uh, whatever uh, charge or the electrons are fast moving thing they have charge and they have also mass okay they have fast moving electrons which has charge and mass done now important they mass me which is never true let's see they possess kinetic energy they possess kinetic energy correct their electromagnetic waves this is the mistake why because let us take the option b what do we say we said cathode rays are fast moving or they contain beam of electrons correct in the defocused in the cathode ray tube so when i say electrons like all matter electrons can be regarded as a wave but not as electromagnetic wave why here i can say electrons can be regarded as waves but not electromagnetic waves electro magnetic waves why em waves or electromagnetic waves what do they contain basically electromagnetic waves are made up of only photons isn't it electromagnetic waves or em waves are made up of only photons but here cathode rays are made up of electrons that's why this option b is not true for cathode rays so remember cathode rays contain electrons electromagnetic waves contain or the em waves contains photons hence the second statement is not true for cathode rays now let's come back and do the next question students here uh, this is again a great 12th coordination chemistry question let's read this and let's uh, see what are we supposed to do here they said coordination number of calcium is 6 in so directly they have given us an answer that coordination number of calcium is 6 i have to draw the structures and find out in which compound is coordination number 6 so basically what is coordination number coordination number is number of nearest surrounding atoms means the number of surrounding atoms around the central metal atom metal atom so in this case calcium is a central metal atom right let's see so let us draw the structure for all so basically this is calcium edta what is it edta edta is nothing but ethylene diamine tetra ethylene di amine tetra acetate correct ethylene diamine tetra acetate let us write so first of all the central metal atom is calcium so let us see calcium i'm making it center now here ethylene diamine tetra acetate so nitrogen here nitrogen here this is linked to calcium this is linked to calcium tetra acetate we said ethylene diamine tetra acetate so ch2 co minus one more is ch2 co minus so this is also coordinated to this this is also coordinated to this next ch2 COO minus this is coordinated to this one more CH2 COO minus this is also coordinated to this one two three four five six are already over three diamine ethylene we said so this, this is the compound so the first one is this so here here how many are surrounding the central metal atom one two three four 
okay let's count one two three four five six correct yes so one two three four five six here the coordination number is six done let's see the next one so first option i have already got ethylene diamine tetracetate so coordination number six let me see whether this is anything is there or not i mean any other questions related here what is this calcium oxalate isn't it this is calcium oxalate so what is calcium oxalate formula I means structure basically calcium oxalate calcium ca plus two oxalate is c four oxygens o o o o dots dotted 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 this is calcium oxalate suppose if i draw the same thing here with this here how many are uh, surrounding here four here <coughs> only to this calcium this is linked and this is also linked to this only so coordination number is not six suppose if i have to draw for this this becomes two like this for this correct uh, first i have written for this uh, calcium oxalate then i have drawn for this take the charges minus two now let's take this calcium sulfate four h2 how do we write this basically calcium is in the center so one hydrogen here one h four h this is one one more water molecule o h and h four water molecules isn't it so o h h fourth one o h and h this whole thing again what is the calcium sulfate four water molecules are over so calcium sulfate isn't it so this and this again here you have to draw one sulfate so four so four so four dotted dotted here also dotted right 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 so this how are these two linked basically these two means uh, through hydrogen bonding this this is an hydrogen bonding this is hydrogen bonding correct so this is plus two this is minus two so here this calcium so don't, uh, is attached to the sulfate by hydrogen bonding now how many other one two three four correct so here also four here almost i have to take like this this is one attached and this is the second one here the coordination number is six here the coordination number is four here the coordination number is six so the correct option is cal this is calcium edta minus two here we have one two three four five six called uh, surrounding atoms nearest neighboring atoms so the coordination number is six in this let's come back and see the next question so after that coordination com uh, chemistry equation let's read this question students so what did they give us they said <coughs> the rate of sn2 reaction is maximum when so they said the rate of sn2 reaction is maximum when the solvent is so they have given different different solvents one is methanol one is water one is one is dmso and one is benzene okay right. so basically whenever it is sn2 or sn1 reactions you have to remember important thing what is that for sn1 or sn2 let us divide like this and remember now only so right so basically SN1 is what unimolecular reaction this is bimolecular here what in SN1 what happens here carbocation uh, stability biggest barrier is carbocation stability now here steric hindrance that's the most important and here what is the option here tertiary greater than secondary very much greater than primary here primary greater than secondary very much greater than tertiary now here in SN1, very weak means the nucleophile, whatever they generally, you know, nucleophile is very weak. Correct? Okay. Let us write that. Weak nucleophile. In SN2, it is strong nucleophile. Right. Here, in SN1, what is the solvent we require? Always remember, in SN1, we require polar protic solvents. Okay, let us write this as 1, 2, this is 3. Polar protic solvents. Let us name one polar protic solvent, basically alcohols. Alcohol. For SN2, we always require, let us name this as 1, 2, 3. For SN2, we will always require polar a protic solvents 
aprotic solvents what are they examples are dmso examples are acetone now here there is a tension and inversion if i have to take the last one you observe the retention and inversion when i see sn2 inversion is observed no retention so these are the points which you have to remember okay so here they said among now sn2 they said sn2 what is the solvent sn2 the solvent is dmso so here the option given is dmso <coughs> solvent so a dmso solvent uh, what is the full form of dmso it is dimethyl sulfoxide let us write here dimethyl sulfoxide so the correct option is C option so remember this along with this question it will be a complete analysis of that now let's come back and do the next question